And what did you use? A star. Brittany Barron was beaten and forced to behead her own friend. Both husband and wife were tried in court in this shocking case of jealousy, abuse, and murder. The nightmare began for the 31-year-old mother when she was beaten and choked after telling her husband, Armando Barron, she wanted a divorce. A week later, Armando found out she'd been texting her friend and co-worker, Jonathan Amaro. Brittany said what followed was a violent assault with her husband beating her about the face repeatedly and strangling her so hard she says she passed out. Barron admits to having considered a romantic relationship with Anthony when her husband found the text. He then texted Jonathan pretending to be Brittany and lured him to a park in the woods. The jealous husband then beat him in front of her. At one point he like stopped, stomps on his face. According to Barron, Armando then forced her to join in ordering her to slit Jonathan's wrist and stand on his neck. I mean, you could hear John like, struggling like he was trying to breathe. <laughs> Baron said she refused to kill her Jonathan. When she refused, he did it himself. Do it. Shoot him. What did you tell him back? No. Did you say whether you could do this? I was like, I can't. Yeah, I, I can't. According to her testimony, his last words were, I thought you were going to let me live before her husband shot him three times. The couple then drove 200 miles across New Hampshire with the body before Armando ordered Brittany to cut off Jonathan's head so the body could not be identified. You removed Mr. Emerald's head with his body still in his Subaru Impreza, correct? That is correct. And you had done that so that when you removed his head, it would fall to the ground? Yes, I did. After Brittany had decapitated Jonathan, she wrapped his head in a tarp and placed it in a grave. Now that's super crazy that this happened just for the simple fact. Man, her husband is one crazy psycho. And you know, I'm sad that she had to cheat, you know, on, on him. But it's also messed up that he took it as far as he did because nobody deserved to be, you know what I'm saying? Having a life chosen by the hands of somebody else. That should be the high power doing. Nobody else should be doing that. But I'm gonna shut up, we gonna get back into this video. What was the defendant doing while you did that? Watching me do it. Armando Barron also helped hide the body in a campsite. He's charged with murder. Brittany Barron found herself charged with falsifying physical evidence. Prosecutors read out a list of her attempts to cover up the crime. Covered it with a tarp? Yes. Uh, cut down branches? Yes piled those branches uh, in front of and around and on top of the vehicle? With the help of Mr. Barron, yes. She states that she only acted this way because she was ordered to do so. You tried to hide the vehicle itself? Under instruction, yes. The woman now faces her own charges of falsifying physical evidence. She pleaded not guilty, stating how carried out her actions due to fear for her life. Everything that the state alleges that Miss Barron did, she did under duress, and I mean under duress, meaning direct fear from her for her life. She appeared in court with two black eyes. This woman has two black eyes. The result, cops say, of a beating by her enraged husband after he discovered she was having an affair with a co-worker. Brittany said she thought her husband was going to kill her. Armando uh, beat her severely and threatened her. Um, he put a gun in her mouth. Armando Barron also had access to the couple's daughter. Brittany's lawyer argued more than just fear for her own life pushed her into doing what her husband demanded. Despite being forced to do it, Brittany says she is haunted by her actions. I regret it every day and I know that I have to live with what I've done for the rest of my life. She was sentenced to three and a half years in prison for her crimes as for her husband, he received life in prison without parole. The fact that the defendant's destruction of evidence was in an effort to conceal a capital murder is especially alarming and concerning for the safety of the general public. So three and a half years, I mean, that's not bad. But at the same time, man, they should have gave her like a year and gave her three years probation or five years probation or something. But being in that type of environment is not good for nobody. Definitely, if you already been beaten the way she was beaten and you seen her face, nobody should be having to go through that. Nobody, no man, no woman, no animal, no living thing on earth should have to go through what this person went through. And, you know, 
for anybody in those situations, I just feel bad. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, nobody deserved that. Tell me if you've heard this one before. A politician going back on his word. President Biden said this back in 2020. There will not be another foot of wall constructed on my administration. But guess what? The president has gone back on that key promise. His administration announced yesterday that up to 20 additional miles of border wall will be constructed in Texas, even waiving more than 20 federal laws designed to protect the environment to do so. Building the wall was a cornerstone of Donald Trump's campaign, and now Biden is carrying it out. When he was pressed about this hypocrisy yesterday at the White House, the president once again admitted a border wall doesn't work. Do you believe the border wall works? No. In the last year alone, more than 2.2 million people have crossed our country's southern border, up from some 400,000 people in 2020. What politicians on both sides are failing to do, critics say, is address two root causes of this massive influx of refugees. One, unfettered capitalism. The pro-corporate trade deals like NAFTA, which have destroyed the economies of Latin America. And two, wait for it, climate change.